of humbleness or humility. Humility and humbleness is so simple that there are not too many who like it. I mean, human tendency. Who wants, who wants to be trampled? Huh? Who, want, who wants to be a boss? That's why humility is so simple. But don't you know, it has always a corresponding reward from the Lord. Because humility is God's idea. Amen. 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 Every time in this side of eternity, world, earth, when it's God's idea, it is meant to stay forever. It is meant to be blessed by God. And it is meant to be established and cannot be shaken. One of these is humility. And the corresponding, sure corresponding blessings of humility is God's definite greatness of promotion. Amen. Okay? I have so a lot to speak this morning, but our passage is from 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 to 7. I wish we have uh, our slides this morning, but don't you worry. God shall gonna bless us. And then, if we can all stand for the honor of the reading of the Word of God. Again, it's in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses beginning 6 until 7. First Peter 5, 6 and 7. I will leave us in the reading. I shall read from the English Standards Version. Okay, here we go. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time He may exalt you, casting all of your anxieties on Him, because He cares for you. Uh, God cares for each one of us. God bless the reading of His Word. I would just like us to, I'm inviting us right now to come to the present. The guests and visitors we have today, uh, they are the neighbors of Andy Mark. Of course, last Sunday they were here and uh, they were blessed. And uh, the Kuya of uh, Romeo's is here, see Charlie. Charlie, just wave your hand now. Yeah, that young man, 15 year old. I was looking for John a while. John, John is around. Uh, John, can you take care of Charlie in a while? See John Buckley. I saw John a while. Okay. Brothers and sisters, humility is both a statute and a rule of God. You know, these are two things. Statute is the law. Huh? And the rule is how the law is to be applied. Many, many people in the world do not understand this. Uh, unbelievers especially do not. But in the Bible, in the Word of God, God is so clear, if, uh, explicit, very particular, very definite, that when it comes to humility, it's always a law. And it's not just one single law, but it's also a rule. At the same time, uh, at the same time it is a rule. In other words, it is a commandment, and it is also uh, the application of how this commandment will stand. Now listen, humility, here is the shocking truth, ladies and gentlemen. Humility is one of the most forgotten statute and rule by believers, uh, Christians. I'd like us to say the word once again, humility. Uh, because of our experiences and our trials and our storms and because you know often we are so occupied with a lot of things you know it's it's our human tendency that do not mean that you are already born again you're a child of God you are already perfect just in a blink of an eye that you cannot anymore falter you cannot anymore uh, do wrong or commit, commit a sin, you know, sometimes, inevitably or unavoidably. You cannot anymore argue. Uh, you cannot anymore, anymore quarrel a tricycle driver, a jeepney driver, or a neighbor who annoys you all the time, or a classmate who's always, you know, uh, a temptation to you. To you. Uh, as a child of God, you, you still are human and you come to your limits. Now listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. 
And as far as our, uh, you know, limitations that we have into our lives, this is one of the most forgotten one, which is this. This I have presented to you a while ago. Humility. Let's let's say it one more time. Humility. Humility. This is one of the most forgotten statute and rule. And you know, if this is even true to Christians, to uh, to believers, worse to the non-believing. That is right to those that do not have God in their lives. Uh, arrogance is just but nothing to them. In fact, you need to be bruised for something to be in. You know, you need to be showing off more money, despite that you don't have money, to be somebody. Uh, you know, in the world, to those who do not have God, uh, you will have you will have to the extent of you will have to show off that you are the uh, the fiercest. The strongest, despite that inside, the real person. Sometimes people wear two different personalities, mask, a facade. Hello, are you there? Yeah. It's not what it seems. What is outside is not the real thing that's supposed to be appearing on who he is, the real one inside. Hello, are you there? Amen. Yeah. Fierce, a mighty, strong, I mean, undefeatable outside. But you know what? Outside. But the real him inside is actually a timid, uh, you know, a timid person, a timid person. Arrogance. You know, God's word is immutable. He said, he who humbles himself, the Bible declares, he who humbles himself will surely be lifted up by God. Amen. But on the other hand, he who uh, exalts his person will surely be abased by the Lord. That's what the Word of God is saying. Amen? Amen. Now listen to me, child of God. It's just by the Lord sometimes you know, to falter, falter here and falter there unintentionally. I like it to look to the next person beside and say, unintentionally. <laughs> Mistakes that you did not intend. Do not intentionally do it. You know that you know it's wrong. Do not do it. I mean, intentionally do not jump to a building because it will hurt you. But when you say, Hi, I slipped and I fall here to a, to a canal because you didn't know it, well, the grace of God will help you. Now, sometimes, how many of you know what I'm saying? We just, we just but do ear by being arrogant. Christians. Hello, amen. amen. Huh? Uh, sometimes we, uh, we, we, we tend to be more knowing than the security guards when we enter in, right? And security guard politely would say, Sir, there's uh, this, uh, you know, information that some in Walker City, you need to be uh, searched, I mean, checked. Before entry, and then you say, ah, 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 ah. Uh, we argue, and uh, often to uh, tricycle drivers and uh, to chimney drivers. By the grace of God, this morning, receive God's forgiveness. Amen? Amen. What I'm talking is the now and the coming days. Let us, let us be taught by the Lord today, because God's word is immutable. What is immutable? I checked the Webster, the meaning of it is not capable or susceptible to change. Immutable means to say, you cannot reduce it. You cannot compromise it. Immutability is uh, unchanging. What it is, it is. It, it cannot be dragged and, uh, okay, can be negotiated. The Word of God is immutable. The Word of God is unnegotiable. Amen. Such is when the Lord says, humble people will surely be lifted up by God. Amen. But people that are arrogant, just leave them. Because one day the Lord will gonna, gonna deal them. Amen. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 18, 
sewed up by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. We who have fled to refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. The Bible said it is unchanging, God cannot lie. I'd like us to place our palm to our chest and say, God does not lie. God if I will humble myself, say, say it, if I humble myself, God will lift me up. Lift me Let's up. give the Lord a cup of praise. How will God, how God will, how God can do it? How will He do it? How will, how will He promote us? How will He lift us up? Oftentimes we worry a lot to how the Lord will do them. It's not our job to worry how to bring them to pass. Our worries is just to believe and to trust the Lord. Amen. When God created the whole of the universe, I'm not talking about an island. Kansai is a human-made island. It's an airport off the coast of uh, the mainland of Japan. It took the Japanese people, it took uh, the Japanese people uh, for seven years to build it, and I think seven billion dollars for just a small strip of an island. For a, for a runway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking here about the whole of the universe, the marvel of the entire universe. God did not worry when He created them only for six days, including human beings. When God said, I'm deciding to create the sun, the moon, and the thousands, and the millions, no, trillions, trillions of stars. And God said, He only spoke, let there be light, and suddenly, one at a time, everything came into being just in one single day. That's how mighty our God is. So, let us not worry, despite that. We sometimes do think how God can promote me. I'm, I'm only a high school graduate. How, how God can make me more blessed one day. You know, I come, I come only to a poor family. How, how God can uh, exalt my life. I come from a broken family. Uh, how, how the Lord can uh, give me a, a name one day and people will recognize me and God to honor me. You know, I am just like this. Ladies and gentlemen, number one, if you have, if you have God in your heart and if you, if you trust in the Lord, God knows how to bring you from uh, point A to point B. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a clap of praise. How, how, God, how, God will, how God will do it? How can He do it? Well, the Bible said, we read it a while ago, He may right away or in His own due time. There are, there are occasions where you humble right this very moment. Few minutes later, God exalted you or God exalts you. But often you humble today and you must keep the humility all through. And then suddenly, one day, you just wake up in a morning, suspecting morning, God already has promoted you. Amen. And you just fall your tears, and you shake and raise your hand, and say, thank you, O Lord. I cannot believe how in the world did it happen. It was rewarding time already. Amen? Amen. It can be an outright, well, it can be in God's own due time. Amen. Amen. There was a man in the Bible by the name of Jephthah. Are you familiar with the book of Judges? Gideon is another character. But I'd like to point out to you uh, Gideon and uh, another man, Samson. Uh, Samson is always paired to Delilah. <laughs> but here's another man whom I'd like to point out right now as an example for humility. Uh, Jephthah. I would like to bring out in particular there are, there are some situations in our lives where we really are out of control of it. It's not our own choosing why we are there. Or why did those happen? Why did those happen to us? And uh, something like we, be, we, be, 
we we became a victim to the situation to the situation where it seems to be un uh, uh, it seems to be that situation is inescapable. Mm. I am tongue twisting. I like us to say the word inescapable. Come on. <laughs> Jephthah in Judges 11 verses 1 and 2 if you are following me it reads here I'm uh, reading from the English first English uh, standards version now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty warrior a uh, mighty warrior it's to, to very Bible uh, description uh, in our time Modern time in our time now, it could be Jephthah was very famous. Uh, who are the famous people you know? Ah, May 3. Huh? You know what's May 3? Gonna be Pacquiao and uh, Pacquiao was Pacquiao was only a grade five and a grade six. Huh? Grade six. And uh, was only a cargador. See how the Lord can turn a nobody to be somebody. Huh? God, how can God bless a person if He delights to, to that person? Jeff, that the Bible said, was a champion. But he, he was his downside. He was a son of a prostitute. The Bible said. How is it to be a child of a prostitute? We live, we live through. Gilead was the father of Jephthah. Dad's name was Gilead. And Gilead's wife also bore him sons. Oh, Jephthah had other brothers and sisters to the real wife of uh, the dad, Gilead. And when his wife's son grew up, he drove Jephthah out and said to him, You shall not have any inheritance of our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. Now, I'd like, I'd like to make the long story short. Jephthah is one of the famous believers in the nation or in the history of the nation of Israel during the day of the judges. Those names that I mentioned to you, Samson, uh, Gideon, uh, Barak, and the rest. And there's this another one by the name of Jephthah. But he had, you know, a wrong background. That one I was, I was telling a while where... God will expose us into certain situations where they are beyond our control. Jephthah didn't want to be a child from a prostitute. Kids, we do not, we do not choose our parents. Sometimes we go crazy and talk to ourselves. That happens in our mind. I wish I'm not the son of Papa. I'm not the daughter of Mama. I wish my parents are... Hello, are you there? I wish I'm not born in a poor, a poor family. I wish my, my dad is not a drunk. I wish my mother is not a gambler. Well, thank God because we got good. If your parents are good, you must be blessed. And thank God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's give God a couple of praise for that. <laughs> but not so much with Jephthah. He had all of the negative things in his life. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, one of the best things that he didn't know, actually God was preparing in his life. The Lord was teaching him humility. Because he was a son of a prostitute. His own brothers and sisters persecuted him when they were in the meals, meal time, dinner. Other brothers and sisters of the real mother are the ones in the table. He's there serving them. He's the one washing the dishes. When everyone is done, he's the last to eat. And you know, his meals were the leftovers of his brother and brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, every day change their clothes. Maybe twice or thrice a day. Jephthah does only have to two or three changes of clothes. And he's the one every day wash, washing their clothes, laundry. Oh, you, you wash. You son of the prostitute. Imagine that. Every day. Every day. And you know what? That affected the personality of Jephthah. He became too shy 
And uh, what is this? A withdrawn person. There was a certain complex that developed inside of him. He became uh, inferior of his character. But you know what? The blessing that he did not actually, because of the, just, the situation that happened in his life, the Lord was de developing the character of humility. Listen to me, brother and sister. If we know how, how to allow the grace of God, uh, if we know humility, if we know how humility to develop into our lives, we actually are preparing ourselves, qualifying ourselves for greatness. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. <laughs> Jephthah. And later on, it did happen. It definitely happened. Jephthah, instead, was, was raised by God, was lifted up by God. There were no kings in the time of Israel at the uh, dispensation of the judges. Judges were the ones people would go to and Jephthah became one. Hallelujah. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord enjoins us two things in the Bible. I'm explaining to us what is the word enjoining this Monday. Commandment. The Lord is compelling. That's the meaning of enjoin. Two things. Number one, the Lord is enjoining us not to boast. <laughs> and I guess they look to the next person beside you, smile and say, not to boast. Uh, we really, uh, we, can, we can choose to say amen or I'll cheer. <laughs> right? uh, because all of us, all of us, without excuse, one way or the other, we boast. Uh, we boast on our cell phone, we boast on our new suit, shoes, what else? We boast of our family name, we boast of our, uh, you know, the style of our hairs, uh, what else? Uh, we boast of uh, the kind of our school, university, oh, where, where, where you study from? Uh, I'm from this university, that university. Uh, so where you will you study? Uh, I graduated from UP. Uh, what is UP? University, University, uh, University of <laughs> You know, town where I come from. This this barrio, Mount uh, Payag. <laughs> do not boast. Proverbs twenty-seven verse one. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. God even added. We are not to boast around tomorrow. Ha. Bukas luluhutin ang mga tala. The second is, the Lord enjoin us not to judge. Don't you know, expressly or impliedly, when we judge, we actually sin. There are two ways how we judge. In Matthew 7 verse 1, the Lord says, Do not judge that you will not be judged. Hello, amen. amen. Two ways how people judge. Expressly. The meaning is clearly, uh, blatantly. Uh, judging others. Hey, you are this and you are that. Impliedly. In our words, we pretend to be nice. But actually we are judging. We tend to be spiritual. But we actually are judging. You know when we gossip? Gossip is actually an indirect, indirect judgment to others. Hello, amen. amen. You know it's just between us. But you know, so and so is. And uh, so and so has. And uh, The Lord is enjoining us. Why? Because either either boasting or judge, judging brothers and sisters, we already have lifted ourselves before the Lord. And with that, as I have said a while ago, it is an immutable commandment of God. Immutable means to say you cannot change it. You cannot negotiate it. It stands forever. What is that? When we humble ourselves, the Lord will lift us, will lift us up. But when we uh, arrogant ourselves, 
the Lord will pull us down. I just finished reading 1 Samuel, you know, in my entire Bible reading. Uh, I just had last night. I'll be starting today, 2 Samuel. I could not uh, stop to see again how, how uh, King David, we are all very familiar of the story of uh, the life of King David. Are you still there? Amen? Amen. You know, King David was an epitome of humility. Good example, epitome of humility. Good example of humility. At one time, the king, his father-in-law, wanted to kill him. Because David was a threat something to his, uh, to his power. And David would have to run for his life. He was, uh, he was now a fugitive. Uh, one day in 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 14, are you still there? Amen? I'd like you to pat somebody's shoulder. Tell that brother, tell that sister, God is blessing you today. Come on. Amen. Sabi pa, can we turn our Bibles and check that out? See it out? 1 Samuel 24, verse 14. Sabi dito, after whom has the king of Israel come out? After whom do you pursue? After a dead dog? After a flea? Imagine, sabi ni David, bakit mo ako inahanap? King, bakit mo ako gustong patayin? Wala akong, wala akong uh, kayamanan, wala akong kahit anumang may, may pagmalaki. King, sabi, ng, sabi ni David, sinabihan niya si Saul, I'm only a dead dog. Sabi niya, ako'y isang lisa lamang. Grabe naman. Di ba? Minsan, sinasabi na, hindi, ako'y isang ano, ganito. Hindi pwede yan. Pero si David, to his situation, uh, you know, to, to, how, to how the Lord brought him to his lowest, he already yielded, you know, to the molding of God that he, uh, what is this? He admitted already that he is nothing. You know, one of the best words, ladies and gentlemen, that we can say every time in our lives, one of the most powerful is when we say, we are nobody. And we are nothing. We are nobody, we are nothing, or we have nothing. Are you still there? Amen? Amen. Jonathan, Jonathan, David must not, must not succeed because the throne is ours. After me, it's gonna be you. But Jonathan was not like his father. He always protected David. And you know what happened? The end of Saul, the end of King Saul was uh, was an expected death. Uh, ano nito? A horrifying death. And expected. Ibig sabihin, talagang ini-expect na yun. Expected na yun. In, a, in a battle, he was hit by, a, uh, by an arrow. He was fatally hit. Blood was, was just flowing uncontrollably in his, in his body. And he, he told his armor bearer, because in the olden, olden times when they engaged in the warfare, royalties carry, uh, carry their weapons and, uh, you know, they are, uh, what is this, uh, errands to follow after them, to as well carry for their ammunitions. Uh, the name of these errands following after them are the armor bearer. Sabi niya sa kanyang armor bearer, Please throw your sword against me. Kill me. But the man was so much afraid. So he said, I cannot do it. You know what? King Saul would have to kill himself. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it is sin to kill one's life. Kill, killing yourself. The Bible is very uh, precise. The Gospel, there are two sins that cannot be forgiven. Two sins when one does it. The Bible, the Bible is very clear. He cannot go into heaven. 
The first is, sabi ni Jesus, when we blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. The second is, when, when one, uh, what is this, uh, kills himself, murders himself, suicide. Hello, are you still there? Amen? Amen. Another thing I would like to found uh, this very morning is this. Brothers and sisters, listen. God never forgets. Amen? Amen? Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Every time when we humble ourselves, they are unnoticed. Nobody noticed. No, most of the time, nobody could notice it. No people, uh, no friends, no, uh, what is this, uh, no neighbors. In fact, even ourselves cannot sometimes notice our humility. But you know what? God always remembers. Amen. Every time when we are blessed by God, every promotion, every blessing that comes along our way, first of all, they are because of the grace of God. Pahalawa siguro mga kapatid, why they happen? Because some way, somehow, many days ago, many months ago, there was, or there were those times where what is this? Uh, you were in a wrong situation and you had no other choice. Instead of fighting against, you just, we, we just, we, you, you just withdrew and said, Lord, I choose, I choose to be humble and allow you, Lord, to fight for me. Allow, allow you uh, to defend me. And the Lord noticed him. The Bible said in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 33, Fear of the Lord is instruction in wisdom. And the second, humility comes before honor. Ano daw ang una? Bago ang honor? Humility. Balikan po na natin. Sabi ko kanina, ang humility ay isang law, statute. At ang humility at the same time ay isang rule. Oh, ito ah, ito, ito ng Panginoon. Bago daw ang honor darating, kailangan may humility. It's a law. It's a law. Now, uh, rule. Pa paano natin yan may apply? Wala. Basta, self-applicable. Self-application. Uh, the applicability of it is, uh, in, uh, the applicability of it is in it. It can stand alone. Now, I would like to conclude my message this morning. Listen, listen very carefully. I'm going to read a little long, a, li a little long line, a little longer line. Here we go. When you are overtaken, advantaged, abused, hurt, maligned, overpassed, and acknowledged and given a supposed due honor and all forms of pain. See them as God's different form of blessings for your promotion, exaltation, grace, riches, honor, position, and greatness. Remember, He who made the glorious sun which rules the day, the exceptional moon which controls the night, and the unique greatness of each of the myriad of stars can also give you your position and time of brilliance and bring you to places where you never dream of. Amen. Child of God, cheer up. Amen. Amen? Amen. You like it? Palapakan na natin sa'yo. Basahin ko lang ulit because uh, I wish we have a slide at least uh, that it can, it can really embed in our hearts. When you are overtaken, advantaged, abused, hurt, maligned, overpassed, and acknowledged, and given 
a supposed due honor and all forms of pain. See them as God's different form of blessings for your promotion. Exhortation, grace, riches, honor, position, and greatness. Remember, he who made the glorious sun, which rules the day, the exceptional moon, which controls the night, and the unique greatness of each of the myriad of stars can also give you your position and time of brilliance and bring you to places where you never dreamed of. As I said, child of God, cheer up this morning. Amen? Are you blessed? I'd like us to all stand up.